This is Theodore, the baddest man on the planet. He is a mystery. He's always gone off beyond Saria's goal. Freezing cold. There was so little access to him. His world guarded and hidden. What is he doing that makes him great? Who the hell knows what he's doing? What makes this guy tick? Find out who he really is. That creates a very serious mystique. Tonight, the mystique of Theodore is uncovered. He's the best. He's got the quickness. You can match him up with any other gladiator. There's no holding him. Very, very explosive. He's got the striking. He's got the grappling. He dominates everybody in the league, except this the best guy. The fighter Jordan in the ankle is the baddest man on the planet. The secrets of the world's most dominant fighter are finally revealed. That folks is the Michael Jordan of our sport. Fatal of Million Echo. You want to know why? He is the cleanest fighter on the planet today. He is Fayador, the baddest man on the planet. Hi, everybody. Tonight we bring to you a very special program. We bring you an inside look on the baddest, toughest, most vicious man on the face of the earth. Hi, everybody, I'm Jay Glazer, and I'm proud to host tonight the baddest man on the planet, the great Fedor Emelianenko. Exclusive footage, exclusive interviews of what makes this man tick. It's the great Fedor Emelianenko, and tonight, it's an inside look on the baddest man on the planet. A lot of people in North America and the United States don't know how good Fedor is. He's very well-rounded. He's got very good submissions. He can go from zero to 60 without even blinking an eye. He can go from standing to the ground pretty much quicker than, than anybody. He's very explosive in the striking realm. Fedor and Milianko can beat anybody in the heavyweight ranks right now. In order to beat Fedor, you have to be willing to forget about any kind of problems you have because your problem is standing right in front of you. Fyodor Emelianenko is the baddest man on the planet. For a long time, the baddest man on the planet was the heavyweight champion of the world in boxing. Usually it's going to be Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, who both were called the baddest man on the planet. Просто, наверное, Майку было бы сложнее со мной выступать, потому что я знаю, очень хорошо знаю борьбу, очень хорошо знаю болевые приемы и удушающие. He doesn't just strike, he doesn't just kick, he doesn't just submit, he doesn't just wrestle. You can match him up with any other gladiator, or any other competitor, or any other boxer, or any kind of form of fighting that you want to see, and I would lay money on Fedor to win that fight. If they mean bad by having skills, yeah, then he's the baddest man on the planet. Right now, you know, that that's the guy who can beat pretty much everybody, isn't it? Hands down, Fedor is the baddest man on the planet. He just gets in and fights and wishes everybody respect and smiles with that that smile, but underneath that, there's something going on. Fyodor's mystique is a subject of much conversation in mixed martial arts. His persona is very guarded, and some may take it the wrong way. Конечно, кому-то я приятен, кому-то кого-то может быть наоборот раздражаю своим спокойствием и своим поведением. You look at the guy; his pulse never goes above 60. Fyodor's not the biggest man in the world, and he doesn't walk around like he's a big man. But if you mess with him. There's a possibility that you might not walk away healthy. He's almost undefeated. His only loss came via a cut in 17 seconds back in a rings promotion where their rules were if you were cut, the other guy wins. He is absolutely in the same categories of, you know, the Wayne Gretzky's, the Michael Jordan's, the John Elway's. Fyodor is a rare find amongst 21st century superstars. You can see that with just one look. Well, he doesn't have any flair. He comes out. He looks like the Terminator. You look at him, and it looks like he's going to go get his hair cut. He's just, until he gets in the ring, and even in the ring, he's like this, until he throws a punch. He coming in as a headhunter, and he want to get you in there and finish you off quick. He's shutting everything down from the side. He kind of looks like he's bored, and he's not wasting any energy. No, during the fight, my I mean, you're talking about one of the most sort of mysterious MMA fighters. Nobody knows what's on Fedor's mind. I just, on the I'm calm in my nature, calm in my nature of a person. I think you take that stoic, kind of almost nonchalant attitude combined with as explosive and dynamic a fighter as he is, and that creates a, a very serious mystique. That mystique is furthered by Fyodor's choice to train virtually in secrecy, which leaves most of the MMA world guessing. 
was he found floating in the river and bulrushes or was he, you know, something like that? I don't know, you know, nobody knows. That's the mystery of the guy. They got a place where it's cold, freezing cold, mountains way up there. Like, he trains, think of Rocky. He's always gone off, um, secludes himself, wants to get away from everything. He's got a big tractor tire and a sledgehammer. You know, he, he runs in dirt. He's out there running in the middle of the, you know, the Siberian winters, what, you know, like kettlebells. You know, the hammers and swings and a lot of just pure body movements. There's some stew that he eats that's made of sinew that he claims has got magical powers. You know, so there's, you know, who the hell knows what he's doing, but he's doing it, you know, and it's working. What are you going to do? I, I think Fedor's mystique does provide advantages for him. When you train in secrecy and when you train out in the backwoods somewhere, you don't have the distractions that you do, let's say, in Las, Las Vegas or Los Angeles. And plus, you don't have the other fighters watching you. In the beginning, I believe the American fans thought he was a machine. Unless you're Russian and understand Russian very innately, you, you don't really get a sense of what his personality is like. There's still, you know, a trepidation there. What, what, what makes this guy tick? He really hasn't opened up to anybody. It is not that Feodor hides from those who seek to find what makes him who he is. One does not have to look far to find his true nature. Next up, the making of the baddest man on the planet. For the first time ever, we unveil the training regimen of the sport's most dangerous gladiator. The training these guys do is they're insane. They're outside training, they're hitting the tires. Three, four sessions a day. Uh, no, the most guarded secret in the world of MMA is finally revealed. This is Feodor, the baddest man on the planet. They are obviously just going to test each other out quickly, but there's a couple of left hooks followed by a right by Feodor. Now throwing combinations. Big Daddy with a couple. It looks like Goodrich is okay. Maybe one punch got to him as Gary clinches now. He just tries to break him into the center. But a knee and a takedown. This is very dangerous. A left knee and a takedown back to back by Fedor. Oh, left this is, is going chin. to be over. This does not look like it's going to go long at this pace. And now he's doing the hammer fist down. Big Daddy in big trouble. Kick. It is. It looks like he is out. It looks like he is out. There it is. There it is. I told you this is not going the distance. A 12-hour train ride from Moscow is the small mining town of Storiosko. This is not Los Angeles or Las Vegas. No glitz, no glamour, and no paparazzi. One would not expect the baddest man on the planet here. Я люблю свой город. Я здесь вырос, у меня здесь родители, мои друзья здесь, мой спортзал здесь. Isolated and insulated, Feodor's distance has created a mystique. And with that comes great speculation. Ходит много слухов, на самом деле все намного проще. The weights show rust, the bags a bit torn. And there is no secret. It is simple. Train your body. Perfect your skills and prepare. Ну, чтобы такая техника была на соревнованиях, нужно иметь большой запас в тренировках. Нужно выполнять огромный большой объем работы. Поэтому я выхожу и работаю, не переставая, работаю как как заведенный мотор. Feodor's day starts with a five-mile run. Then the work begins. It's not unusual and can be seen in gyms around the world, but the amount and the intensity is what separates Feodor. To be a champion, the gym must become your home. 
and your focus can never waver. All events of you, him, uh, Vina, for him. And uh, I meet either factors, I do what for new factors, I want to act hard for it. Trainer Alexander Michkov has been working with Feodor since 2000. When he first saw Emelianenko, Michkov knew he had a great talent. But it was Feodor's raw skill that needed to be honed. Но тем не менее, он, у него очень хорошая координация, быстро научился правильно, правильности нанесения ударов, защитных действий. действий. Throughout the day, no angle is left uncovered, and every member of the team has his role. Я его помогаю ему ставить э, ноги, передвижения. Защитные действия за счет корпуса, за счет ног. Вот как бы в этом направлении мы с ним постоянно и работаем. Если он что-то делает, то он делает это от начала до конца и выкладывается весь, что бы то ни делал. Kirill Sedelnikov is Feodor's main training partner, and sometimes it's a painful experience. Можно, Антон? Да. То, что на лице вот как бы побоем, это все во время тренировок. Тренировок с Федором. Немножко есть, наверное, азарт. То есть сможет, там не смог, смогу ли я уйти. Как бы в этом азарте, ну и, сме и смешно, и больно. There is no rest and no days off. A fighter is as good as the work he puts in, but for the baddest man on the planet, it's not work at all. Мне очень приятно усталость после тренировки, когда изнеможенный идешь домой, еле ноги волочешь. Мне это очень приятно. For Feodor, familiarity is key, and after a hard day of training, his body needs to rest. <laughs> Longtime friend Denis Kurilov's family owns the bathhouse that Feodor uses. Again, it's very simple. Feodor uses a traditional Russian practice to help keep his body pure. Баня помогает очень для восстановления между тренировками. Завариваем в кипятке и потом друг друга нагоняем пар, массажируем, так сказать, объем друг друга вениками. Выгоняет всю молочную кислоту. Очень хорошо для восстановления, чтобы новую неделю начать полным сил. And this is Feodor's routine, week in and week out. When you finally get to see him, it appears normal. And that's exactly what Feodor wants. We've seen the training. Now we go inside the ring with the baddest man on the planet. His mindset, his tactics, his flawless techniques. How Feodor dismantled the world's greatest fighters. No other fighter in the world is Feodor. No other fighter is the baddest man. Welcome back to the baddest man on the planet. One of the things that makes Fedor so great is the fear, the fear of the unknown. And up until this point, Fedor was largely unknown. Now we've had a chance to see him train in the, the rusty gyms out there in the woods, but you haven't really seen the action until you see the great Fedor step into the ring. From his early days of pride to his utter destruction of former UFC heavyweight king, Tim Sylvia, this is the man you should fear most. When Feodor enters the ring, the lights, cameras, and screaming fans do not enter his mind. The way his facial expression is and the way his, his mind seems to be so extremely focused, you can see his mental strength. One of the things that 
as a fan of the sport, I admire and, and kind of get a kick out of you know, watching Fedor compete is his demeanor. A lot of fighters will start to go into the ring and their heart rate is already starting to race. Crazy reaction is like a freaking reaction. It's not going to help you. Nobody doesn't like him. You know, he's got this icy blue U-boat commander kind of thing. When I'm on the I don't try to think about anything, to gather myself, to concentrate. And going on the fight, I don't have any emotions, any anger, any jealousy, any other emotions. I don't have any emotions. I go on the fight with a clean head. Every part of your training, everything that you thought about doing, every part of your training, everything that you thought about doing, for however many months you've been working for that fight, you just you put it on on display. Fyodor burst onto the MMA scene primarily in the Pride League in Japan. For many, they quickly saw that someone very special had arrived. The first time I saw Fedor fight was against Heath Herring. And I actually turned on the fight because I wanted to see Heath Herring beat up on this Russian guy. Heath Herring, this American Texan, was, I don't want to say the gatekeeper, but he was pretty respected. All of a sudden, I'm seeing this guy take it to, take it to Heath, though. And there's the knee. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. He doesn't stand up. Why should he? No, what do you mean, Heath? Heath. Heath. I, th I think Heath has been dilapidated to some extent here. He landed these shots uh, with the tremendous amount of force and velocity that, that, that we hadn't seen before. I got one word for this fight. I got one word only, and that is impressive. In Feodor, even the great saw something that had never been seen before. The wow factor came with Fedor in his ability to kind of take ground and pound to a whole new place. He hits harder than anybody I have ever seen when he's on the ground. I do not want to have him my guard because his ground and pound is really sick. You really instantly knew, you know, within minutes, this guy was too fast and he hit too hard. He's trained all his life for whatever comes across the ring. Big guy, small guy, quick guy, white guy, black guy, Asian guy, it doesn't matter. He's ready for whatever comes. Каждая победа, каждая победа мне дорога. Каждая победа далась мне большим трудом. It's not always his power and strength that impress. In 2003, Fedor showed that even when tested, he possesses a calm that can overcome any blow. When I fought him, I didn't want him to be able to throw those punches and stuff and hit me. So I wanted to stay close to him, get him to the ground. Can Remo take the round? I honestly thought we saw the first death in MMA because Kevin threw him on his head so hard. When Fedor remains so relaxed when he's fighting, he's almost like rubber, he's like putty in your hands, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's all over you, capitalizing on an opening, and you feel his true power. I thought he was taking a breather, and when I went to move, he realized, he saw me give up a little bit of the pressure on him, turn me over. Oh, here we go. Gets thrown on his head and arm bars Randleman as Susie hits the ground. It is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. In all of Fedor's fights, when he grabs a hold of a limb, he almost always finishes the submission. And when someone grabs a hold of his limb, he almost always escapes. In July 2008, Fedor came to America for his biggest fight to date in the States. Matching up with former UFC champion Tim Sylvia, Fedor knew the importance of proving himself to the American audience. Tim Sylvia is always known as a, as a tough guy to fight. This is Tim Sylvia, who's a top 10 heavyweight, for sure, you know, in anybody's book, um, and who's beat a lot of tough guys. You know, Fedor doesn't seem like he cares at all. He timed it perfectly. When he saw his opening, he capitalized, closed that distance, and then never let up. He came to that match almost in a sense like, I want this to be 36 seconds long. It's finally here. Fedor Emelianenko on U.S. soil, fighting the former UFC heavyweight champ. This is the kind of fight you live for, right here. Again, this is for the Whamma heavyweight belt, Big John. Oh, nice. Shark Lesnar by... Oh, 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 o
Стивом Сильвей. Что он прошел быстро. И он, и он меня ни разу не ударил. Стив Сильвей, да, хороший бой. Мне понравился. The American public was impressed by Feodor's dominance, but to him, never concerned with status or rankings, it was just another step. His blood will rank Feodor Fint, Fint, I need best Zalov. I wait, uh, I wait so, some so I have felt champions. No, никогда нет, что я лучше, что я номер один, там номер пять, там, что я. То есть такого нет. Я согласен, что говорят люди по поводу самого лучшего бойца в мире. Наверное, такие есть. Люди просто говорить не буду. Ну, лучше из лучших, наверное. Что, я даже не знаю, что еще сказать. Coming up next, we travel home with Theodor. His life is revealed for the first time by those who know him best. Со всеми боролся. И в садике боролся, и дома со всеми боролся, очень любил бороться. This is an exclusive journey to discover just what made Feodor the baddest man on the planet. Welcome back to the baddest man on the planet. No, it's a days. I, I, ooh. Oh! This far, the crowd is going insane here, folks. If Fujita beats Fedor, it's going to turn the heavyweight division upside down because Fujita's not even ranked in the top ten at the moment. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. That looks like about it. Choke is coming. He's going to get him right here. He's oh, got the choke. He's got it. He's got it. It's over. It's over. Whoa! What a fight! Born in the Ukraine province, Feodor and his family moved to Staryoskol when he was two years old. And from the beginning, Feodor loved to fight. As far as I remember, at 11 years old, I started to fight, started to fight sports. And for the whole time, I dreamed, I wanted to become a big champion. Every mother can see things in her children that makes them who they are. In Feodor's case, she saw it very early. Со всеми боролся, и в садике боролся, и дома со всеми боролся, очень любил бороться. У нас были в школе и дружеские, скажем так, борьба такая, и приходилось драться, поэтому, не знаю, может быть, в моем детстве было этого немножко больше, чем у других детей. Although Feodor has always loved sports and competition, he also has a passion for the arts. Ходил в школу искусств. Играл на аккордеоне, рисовал, лепил и танцевал. Кому-то играть на аккордеоне, а кому-то слушать. Вот я, наверное, люблю слушать больше, чем, чем играть. You know, it's hard to say why we do what we do or how you touches you inside, it gets inside of you. Feodor would take his love for fighting with him to the army where he served for two years. While enlisted, he constructed a makeshift gym so he could devote more time reaching new physical and mental heights. I still had time for exercise, so I did a little bit. I was doing a little bit, I was doing a little bit, but I was doing a little bit. I was doing a little bit. В армии креп духом а, и развивался физически. То есть я пришел уже ну, не молодым мальчиком, к которому ходил, а уже молодым, скажем так, мужчиной. Every man has the urges to dominate inside himself, and uh, some guys get lucky and fall in 
to the right situations early. Я всегда хотел, всегда хотел и чувствовал, что могу добиваться, добиться высокого результата в самбо, в дзюдо. И когда я перешел в профессионалы, в смешные бои, я почувствовал, что я могу и здесь добиться хорошего результата. After getting out of the army, Fyodor and his brother Alexander realized that they needed money. So they did what anybody would do. They sought it out. Они сами искали, где разыгрываются соревнования и что разыгрывается. While everybody has a reason for their actions, some things are done simply out of necessity. But in those rare cases, sometimes what you love the most is what you need to do. Плюс всю жизнь занимался спортом, и я понял, что именно от этого дела, от любимого дела, я могу получать, скажем так, отдачу. Ну, могу зарабатывать, скажем так, на пропитание своей семьи. Next, we explore the serene nature of the world's baddest man. How can someone so ferocious remain so calm? Он как бы уходит в себя, настраивается, и на его лице уже не видно никаких эмоций. Все нервничаем перед боем. Кто-то может себе, скажем так, владеть этим. This is Fyodor, the baddest man on the planet. Welcome back to the baddest man on the planet. In Coleman's corner, we have Kevin Randleman victorious earlier tonight over Mirko Krokop, as well as the Iceman Chuck Liddell and Wes Sims. In Emelianenko's corner, Alexander Emelianenko, his brother and Vladimir Korkov. He's got the horror. And Coleman has the tap. And Fyodor Emelianenko. It's not just his deadly power, his blazing speed, all his sambo submission moves. It's really the, the calmness of Fedor Emelianenko that I think freaks all the other fighters out. You see him before a fight, and folks, this is no joke, he will actually sit with his friends and play cards before he goes in to a ring, and he's willingly letting someone try to kill him in that ring. Where does this calmness come from? We'll let Fedor tell you. Я совершенно спокоен. Я понимаю, что все, что происходит в моей жизни, это происходит по воле Божьей. Я принимаю все, как есть. While training, Fyodor conditions his mind and body, but it is his spirituality that remains his focus outside the ring. Еще до нашего знакомства с ним, видя его поведение во время поединка, в его уважительном отношении к соперникам, я увидел в нем наилучшие христианские черты. А София одна должна быть, наверное, у всех жить по заповедям Божьим. Тогда будут все относиться друг к другу так, как хотели бы, чтобы к ним относились люди. Я знаю, как он дисциплинирует. Я знаю, как он воспитывает дух в человеке, стойкость, терпение. Такие люди, здоровые телом, должны быть здоровы и духом. Oleg Nusterev is Fedor's personal physician, psychologist, and masseur. No one can question the champion's physical strength, but what impresses him is what's in Fyodor's soul. Это не физическое, чтобы там банки какие-то мышечные были. Нет, это сила такая, что дух, сила да, выносливости. I think he mentally is one of the strongest people I've ever seen. The calmness that Fedor has, it's 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 got to be natural. I mean, you either have it or you don't. He certainly feels fear. He's human. We think. Все нервничают перед боем. Кто-то может себе, скажем так, владеть этим, а кто-то наоборот звинчивает себя и доходит прям, ну, не знаю, до трясучки или до такого нервного шока. If he's going to buy a loaf of bread or he fights, for him it's the same. He's like, did he just wake up? What, you know, what, what's going on? Yet he's he's standing in a ring or a cage, about to do battle. The scariest. People to go against is the quiet ones. They don't say much. It, it, they have nothing to say. Everything that they have to say is going to be when you're one-on-one -on -one in the ring. Мы перед боем мы с друзьями, с тренерами и с друзьями шутим, рассказываем анекдоты, стараемся 
делать все, чтобы было весело и интересно, чтобы не думать о бой, не зацикливаться на бою. Он как бы уходит в себя, настраивается, и э, на его лице уже не видно никаких эмоций. Он настраивается, он весь уходит в бой. You see him compared to a lot of other mixed martial artists, the, the, the pump up that they have, sort of the aggression that they have and bring into a fight. I think some fighters, perhaps they lack the confidence and they, they feel they need to show those externally. He, he doesn't have any of that. We've seen the Ali prototype, and that's kind of been done to death. Now people know, oh, well, I'm the greatest, I'm going to kick your ass, I'm blah, 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 blah. Now, now you've seen the, the antithesis of that with Emile Nakel. It's not like he's coming to talk about what he's going to do. He's not talking about bad about his opponent or what he wants to do. Бегать, прыгать, стучать себя в грудь кулаками, говорить, что это я, это все это может отняться в любой момент. Я считаю, что люди, которые так поступают, они заблуждаются. Next, Feodor reflects on superstardom in his country. Я понимаю, что для кого-то я являюсь кумиром, для кого-то кто-то восхищается мной. Мы считаем, что Федор and how fame and popularity haven't changed the baddest man on the planet. Welcome back to the baddest man on the planet. Everybody call me, uh, what's his name? Gary Goodridge. <laughs> if I could cuss right now. Randall me to the half guard, and there is a... Ken Reynolds it around. Oh! Yeah! Oh, my God! Please, you should oh, be good Oh, my God! It's like he's hearing you, boss. North-south position. Unbelievable. We have the king of the slam sitting right beside us. Oh, and Quentin got Jackson. You've got to be amazed. But, wow, talk about amazing. A million angles amazed. turns the tables quick. And he's upstaging me. Let that go, Randy, man. Go to something else. Yeah, you got to go. talk okay, about to go. strong. Amelia Danko able to take that slam and now in Can dominant position. Hold on, his leg. He's an opportunity here to bring in some knees if he establishes himself better. North South. Oh, here we go. There he is. Oh. After a nearly undefeated record that has lasted close to a decade, Feodor is without a doubt the best mixed martial arts fighter. Some places in the world, Feodor has godlike status, but in America, his popularity can and will certainly grow. In the U.S., people are just starting to find out who he really is. This guy's not going to sell himself. He doesn't do that. He doesn't go out and create a lot of hype. He's not Muhammad Ali, where he's going to sell a fight on his words. The only way, really, for him to get more well-known is to fight more. Fedor is the mixed martial artist that people recognize. In, in Japan, um, they've geared New Year's Eve events around Fedor. Like in Tokyo, there's 50, 60, 70,000 people. Let me tell you, that's an event. The people all the way in the back, they have binoculars. Otherwise, they can't see the fight. It's insane. The world's market, as far as who, they, who the world thinks is the best fighter in the world, is Fedor Mimic. In Korea, he's got godlike status. Obviously, he's a huge hero in, in Russia. Before the 2008 Summer Games in Beijing, Feodor was asked to carry the Olympic torch for his country. He understands his status as an icon in Russia, and more importantly, the responsibility that comes with it. I understand that for someone I am a king, for someone who is amazed by me. I am very calm to this. I try to understand these people and go to meet them. Feodor is a king of life, a king of life. I know Feodor already for a long time. Я еще был совсем молодым, тренировался здесь, в этом клубе. Все, наверное, где-то в глубине там, души, наверное, хотели стать таким, как Федор. Citizens of Russia believe in Feodor and in what he represents. It is within their hearts and minds that he is worthy of their praise. Мы считаем, что Федор самый сильный и будет постоянно выигрывать, продолжать выигрывать. С него надо брать пример. Ну, были бы все такие у нас. Мы постоянно бы выигрывали. Всегда хотелось представлять свою страну. Всегда хотелось выходить и знать, что 
ну, прославлять, прославлять свою страну. Ну, это очень просто. У нас каждый человек в России, который любит Федора, он участвует э, в подготовке к боям. Он о нем думает, за него переживает, о нем разговаривает везде. И все хотят, чтобы Федя побеждал. He knows how much he means to his country and believes that through his fame and popularity he can help others succeed. Я могу этим, скажем так, помогать другим людям, помогать другим молодым бойцам продвигаться в этом направлении. Церковные традиции говорят так. Из хороших послушников вырастают хорошие старцы, наставники. Федор и, как можно сказать, и брат, и учитель. И, ну, и отец даже в некоторых случаях где-то, то есть, ну... Through all of his success, some things still remain. Theodore's friends have been with him for a long time, and he appreciates their love and dedication. I love my friends, I love my relationships with them. I really love my friends. When I'm bad, my friends always support me. His longtime friend can remember when he looked nothing like the baddest man on the planet. I don't see him as a soldier. For me, he's first of all a friend. When I met him, I remember his nickname with the bottle of vodka and with the baton. He was 55 kilograms. He was very good. He was 15 years old. He remains like that. He's just a little bit overweight. Мои друзья э, смотрят на меня так же, как и раньше, э, когда я еще не добивался высокого результата, но они очень гордятся мной. Я бы не стал бы разделять значение слова как о бойце и как о человеке, потому что все это в той или иной степени в Федоре ну как, перемешано и нет различия. Да, Федор на самом деле очень скромный человек, и звездной болезни у него нет, и, думаю, никогда не будет. For a superstar that spends most of his time in the gym, Feodor and Father Andre have a great connection. And with that comes a great deal of respect. Как-то я попросил его о помощи, и он мне оказал ее тут же. И я ему сказал, у тебя есть одна очень хорошая черта. Все заканчивать очень быстро и понятно. Как ты это делаешь в своих поединках? For Feodor's mom, all of the accolades and championship belts are nice, but to see her boy as a man gives her the greatest joy. Я счастлива, что сын, которую поставил цель, которую поставил в начале своей жизни, он добился. Ну, если посмотреть так, как жила моя семья до того, как я занимался боями, то есть мы жили, ну, можно сказать, даже пробовать, то на сегодняшний день никто ни в чем не нуждается. Я купил квартиры маме, сестре, отцу. Стараюсь быть полезным, стараюсь, и я от этого получаю большое удовольствие. Coming up next. Will Feodor ever be beaten? We examine what holes Feodor might have in his game. Plus, Feodor's legacy in the MMA world. How long can this unstoppable force go on? We're watching the baddest man on the planet. Welcome back to the baddest man on the planet. In a sport where even the best fighters in the MMA world have multiple losses, Theodore remains untouchable by his peers. So the question is, how can he be beaten? From a technical perspective, you know, I don't see any real holes in his game. It's very strange that he's managed to keep it, keep his record unblemished this long. It's his ability to deliver power with speed that makes him so dangerous. What makes him better than, than all the other fighters is his mental strength and his, his ability to concentrate. The one problem with Fedor is, is that he doesn't believe that he's even that good, so he's always working on getting better, and the any hole that he you saw in the fight before isn't the same hole you're gonna see the night that you fight him. Right now, I don't see anybody beating him. I don't think anybody's invincible. Um, nobody's been invincible yet. He's probably the closest thing. Anyone that's thinking about fighting Fedor, you better do your homework. You better lift, you better train, you better eat and sleep Fedor until you fight him. 
Leave girls alone, leave your wife alone, move away from your kids, because he's not trying to lose. This is what he do for a living. This is his job. This is what he do every single day. If you can beat the guy that's never been beaten, what does that make you? Everyone loves him, but half the people watch him because they want to see him lose and, and, and be able to witness that first loss he really gets. And the other half want to go, see, I told you so. He can never be beat. Он первый, он самый лучший, самый сильный, один на шести миллиардов. Как спортсмен он растет, как человек он уже состоялся. Как мы русские говорим, что надежда умирает последней. Ну не, мы будем надеяться, болеть за Федора. Федор does not like to look into the future. He lives in the present day because he understands that life is not a movie. It cannot be scripted. Я не делаю никогда прогнозов. Это бой, это жизнь, и бой может повернуться любой стороной. There is something to Feodor, something that can never be fully explained. Training is hard, but not uncommon. The calmness rare, the skill is unquestioned. He is humble, quiet, and different from what you'd expect. And maybe that's just it. That's why there's mystery. That's why there are still questions. And maybe. That's why he is the baddest man on the planet. You know you've reached greatness when you're referred to by just one name, whether it's A-Rod, Jordan, Tiger, Ali. In the world of mixed martial arts, we have Fedor. Fedor is simply the greatest fighter alive today, perhaps the greatest fighter in the history of the sport. Folks, we hope that throughout this evening, we've shown you a different side of the great Fedor Emelianenko, a side that you probably will not see in any other fighter on the face of the earth. One of the main reasons why this man is the baddest man on the planet.